today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. How can you be a gold medalist in bathing? I mean, how many baths do you take? What up? It's your boy, Trend Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's a Monday morning. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I actually chilled out this weekend, did nothing, stayed at home by myself, watched movies, had pizza, swam a little, sat in the sun. So I hope you guys had a great weekend and enjoyed the beautiful weather. Um, all right, I got a good show set up for you guys today, as always. Um, I got four, one, two, three, four, five lead stories for you guys today. The first one, we got to talk about the Paris Olympic organizers and them making what people are saying a mockery of the Christian Last Supper. Then we're going to talk about Donald Trump saying that he wants federal immunity for all police officers. Then we're going to go talk about Kamala Harris calling the family of Sonia Massey. The FBI confirms that a bullet did actually indeed hit Donald Trump in the ear. And then lastly, J.D. Vance speaks about his comment saying that the Democratic Party is ran by childless cat ladies. Then we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk Celine Dion making a comeback. Travis Scott, the Chipotle CEO, saying that he's going to have bigger um, portions for his customers. And then we're going to close out quick news with Drake quoting Kendrick Lamar. Then we got question of the day. And actually, today we don't have sports news because we're going to talk about the Paris Olympics in our lead stories. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. The 2024 Paris Olympics officially apologizes for the Last Supper parody on the opening at the opening ceremonies. They said uh, they were never intended to show disrespect to any religious group. All right. The organizers of the 2024 Olympic Committee are apologizing after angering a lot of Catholics and other Christian groups for their Last Supper parody skip, which has which was shown during the opening ceremony of Friday's events. Um, the, um, the Leonardo da Vinci iconic painting, which recreates the biblical scene of Jesus Christ and his apostles sharing one last meal before his crucifixion. In the sketch, there were, in the Olympic sketch, there were drag queens and transgender model features along with a child and a naked singer made up of Greek god of wine. Um, on Saturday and Sunday, July 27th and 28th, the organizers of the 2024 Paris Olympics released an apology for their Last Supper parody. During a news conference, Paris 2024 spokesman Anne uh, DeCampis stated, clearly there were never any intentions to show disrespect to any religious group. Um, she said, the opening ceremony tried to celebrate community tolerance. We believe this ambition was achieved. If people have taken any offense to it, we are really sorry. The artistic director, Thomas Jolie, ad- added, um, our idea was inclusivity. Naturally, when we want to include everyone and not exclude anyone, questions are raised. Our subject was not to be submersive. We never wanted to be submersive. We wanted to talk about diversity. Diversity means being together. We wanted to include everyone, everyone, simple as that. In France, we have artistic freedom. We are lucky in France to live in a free country. Paris 2024 President Thomas Estengat also uh, tried to minimize, minimize the criticism and said, we imagine a ceremony to show our values and principles, so we gave a very committed message. The idea was to really trigger a reflection. We wanted to have a message as strong as possible. Naturally, we have to take into account the international community. Having said that, it is a French ceremony for the French games, so we trusted our artistic direction. We have freedom of expression in France, and we wanted to protect it. So it sounds kind of like they're saying that they're sorry and apologizing, but saying, yo, this is how we do it out here in France. But anyways, uh, take a listen to um, one of the, the members, uh, what she said at a press conference. Take a listen. 
clearly there was never uh, an intention uh, to to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Thomas Jolie really tried to uh, really intend to to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, we are of course really sorry. The thing that I don't understand um, is like, why would you choose a Christian um, painting or a Christian theme and put ideals that are not Christian ideals? That was that's what makes no sense. I understand creative expression. Myself being a very creative person, I get it. To, to, to have creative freedom, totally get it. It's not so much. I think people having a problem with transgender being involved in the ceremony, I think some people would, but you wouldn't have had such enormous backlash mixing a religious um, artistic expression with a transgender drag queen community. Like those things don't mix, right? It's like there's, there's Muslims ideals, there's Jewish ideals, there's Christian ideals, and there's so many other religious ideals. And I just think that it was, not well thought out trying to mix the two of them. Um, if you wanted to have um, inclusivity and you wanted to have expression and you wanted to show um, an expression of transgender or the gay community, I think that should be should be done separate from uh, from a religious expression. You know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't make sense to try to marry the two when the Christian's ideals do not align with the LGBTQ community. So. Um, Second thing is the, um, I can't remember his name who said that, um, uh, you know, this is France games for France. And that's something that they do out there. Um, fine. If that's what you do out there, but you understand that the world is watching. So, um, if, if you're doing something for the world and you're showing the reflection of France, it, it, it doesn't really make sense because that's not necessarily just a French tradition. That's not something you do there. Religion has nothing to do with what part of the country you come from. So if, if, if France has a certain drag queen or LGBTQ and you want to show that side of France, go ahead, do that all day. Of course, you're going to get some backlash, but I think the part that they're mix mixing is, is sorry. I think the part that they're missing is mixing the Christian ideals with ideals that don't mix with the religion. So anyways, um, they have taken down the actual official ceremony off of their YouTube page. So it doesn't really make sense that if it's so them and they're so standing by it, why are they taking it down? Anyways, uh, there's a lot of discussion online about it. I would love to know what you guys think. Send me an email, trendoutloud at cfqr600.com. Comment below this video or uh, send me a DM at any of my social media handles. Uh, social media platforms at Trent Out Loud. All right, in our second lead story, Cardi B slams Donald Trump as he continues to promise federal immunity for all police officers, despite the outrage over Sonia Massey's murder after watching her get killed in 4K. All right, so um, Bronx rapper Cardi B is again blasting former President Donald Trump as he now continues to promise federal immunity for all police officers dis despite continued outrage over Sony Sonia Massey being recently murdered by police in her own home in Illinois. Uh, let me just stop there for those of you who don't remember. We talked about this last week where uh, there was um, Sonia Massey. She was in her home. Uh, two police officers came in. She actually called the police officers because she thought she had an intruder in her house. Um, and through conversation, asking her for ID, et cetera, they were in her house, there was a pot of boiling hot water. The police officers asked her to take the hot water off of the stove. She held it in her hand. They thought she was going to throw the boiling hot water on them, which is, and they took out their guns and shot her in the face. Boiling hot water does not result in murder. So this, for those of you who don't remember or those of you who haven't heard the story yet. All right, so uh, let me get back to the story. On Saturday, July 27th, Donald Trump and his running mate, Senator uh, J.D. Vance, held their own joint presidential rally in Minnesota. Um, yeah, Minnesota. 
Minnesota, sorry. Um, at the event, just two weeks after Trump assassination attempt at Pennsylvania rally, and three weeks after Massey's police-involved murder, Trump again promised to bring out federal immunity for police officers. Trump told his supporters, we're going to give immunity to police so that they can do their job. We're giving federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. I don't know why they repeated that. Sorry. Um, uh, reacting to Donald Trump's federal immunity, the police officers promised um, Bronx rapper Cardi B revered uh, revealed her shock, especially after the recent police-involved murder of Sonia Massey. That we're going to give immunity to police so they can do their job. I'm giving federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. Now, this is not the first time Trump has made this promise. Once in February 2024 and again in April 2024 at another presidential campaign stop, Trump said, we're going to work out a federal immunity for police so that they are allowed to do their job without losing their house, their pension, and everything else when the liberal governors and mayors don't protect them. All right, so, I mean, like, I just don't understand Trump sometimes, like, the, it, it, let's say that is your belief and that is your policy. Why now would you be reinstating that when you know America, especially black America, black, brown America is, is grieving over this senseless murder of Sonia Massey. And, and even if you were, uh, even, even if you are firm on this policy, why not say, you know, I understand, you know, what has happened and I condemn this police officer for, for making this mistake or doing whatever, blah, blah. Like, I just, I just don't understand Trump sometimes. Like, some people respect the fact that he is unapologetic, doesn't matter anything that happens, but it's just, it's just tasteless. Like I say, I always try not to make my podcast be political. Um, and if that's one of Trump's policies, let that be his policy. The thing that I don't understand that he does sometimes is he could preface his policy with saying, I believe that, you know, police officers should have federal immunity. However, in a time where it's clear and blatant, no, of course they shouldn't, right? Like, let's say his policy is, you know, federal immunity from such and such and such, but an act like happened with Sonia Massey, Sonia Massey that should 100% be, you know, it just, I don't know, I don't uh, know. I just don't understand Trump sometimes, man. You guys let me know what you think. All right, this brings us to our third lead story, talking about Sonia Massey. The family of Sonia Massey speaks out after receiving a call from Vice President Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris took time to reach out to the family of Sonia Massey, the 36-year-old black woman who was fatally shot by a sheriff deputy in her Illinois home. According to Massey's father, James, who spoke to Harris, said, um, it's made me feel a lot better today. She gave us her heartfelt condolences and she let us know that she is 100, she's with us 100%, that this senseless killing must stop. Shadia Massey, a cousin of Sonia, said Harris called moved her deeply. That call right there meant the world to my family right now, she said. I mean, it definitely broke every last one of us down. Out of all the phone calls, out of all the phone calls, all of the thousands of thousands of messages, phone calls, and inboxes, this one here really meant the world to our family. It's not known if Trump reached out to Massey's family, and our thoughts or condolences are with Sonia's entire family. You see, this is what I am saying, right? Like, again, just, just trying to play devil's advocate like I always do on my show and, and not take sides, but... If Trump has a policy that he wants to protect police officers, that's his right as, as a presidential you know, candidate, and he wants that, and that's fine. But you have to have some sort of compassion for people. Call up Sonia Massey's family, you know, speak with her. Hey, I hear about this. Just want to make it clear. I want you know, federal immunity for officers that maybe make mistakes on the job or maybe, you know, do something, blah, 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 but just want to make it clear that, you know, the, this police officer who literally just shot your daughter, son, cousin, et cetera, in the face because she had a boiling, boiling hot water, just want to make it clear that, you know, some, in this case, no, we do not want to have immunity. You know what I mean? So anyways, it's just uh, crazy to me. But anyways, shout out to Kamala Harris. 
All right, this is our fourth lead story. FBI confirms bullet struck Donald Trump's ear during assassination attempt. Why this is still news just shows Donald Trump's like arrogance. He just wants everybody to know that he was struck by a bullet and it couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, this is uh, this is a Donald Trump press release. Anyways, the FBI confirms that the bullet that a bullet did indeed strike former President Donald Trump's ear during his assassination attempt on July 13th. Per ABC News, the updates comes after Trump lashed out against FBI Director uh, Christopher Ray for testifying earlier this week that it was still unclear whether Donald Trump was hit with a bullet. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is just all Donald Trump. If you recall, on Thursday night, Trump posted on Truth Social's account, FBI Director, Director Christopher Ray told Congress yesterday that he wasn't sure if I was hit by shrapnel, glass, or a bullet. The FBI said in a statement, what struck former President Trump in the ear was a bullet. Uh, whether whole or a fragment into, uh, or a fragmented in smaller pieces fired from the deceased subject's rifle. So <laughs> it comes out, hey, we don't know what hit him. FBI says, actually, it's unclear. We don't know if it was fragments. We don't know if it was glass. We're not too sure. The next day, we're, we're sure now it's a bullet. <laughs> a bullet definitely hit him in his ear. Like, this is just crazy, man. This is exactly what I just talked about in the last couple of lead stories. Like, why are these the things that are important to Trump? Like, I just don't understand. He has, he just, I just don't feel like he has a great, good way. He has a great way of commit, uh, communicating to his base. I just feel like that's why he might have a hard time winning over like the independents or the, um, what do they call them? The people who don't know if they're, what, who they're going to vote. The, Whatever, the people who don't know who they're going to vote forgot their, their technical name. But I just feel like he, he needs to not soften because people like the fact that he's, that he's tough and that he's stringent and that he never wavers. But I don't know. Who am I to say? Anyways, just those are the things that bother me about him. All right. In our fifth and final uh, lead story, J.D. Vans speaks about child, childless cat ladies comments he made in a resurface interview. He said, the substance of what I said, I'm sorry, it's true. Donald Trump's Republican nominee for vice president, J.D. Vance, uh, joined Megyn Kelly to discuss remarks he made in 2001 about childless cat ladies. Vance made the comment in their interview with Tucker Carlson and named people like Kamala Harris and AOC while asserting that the entire future of the Democrats are con controlled by people without children. He addressed the sarcastic comment in an interview with Kelly on Friday, saying that people are focused so much on the sarcasm and not the substance of what he actually said. Van explains that his comments were not a criticism of people who don't have children, but criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti-family and anti-child. He claims that the left is supporting policies such as getting rid of child tax credits that make it, and I quote, Way too hard to raise children in the United States. I have a little clip of J.D. Vance. Take a listen. Obviously, it was a sarcastic comment. People are focusing so much on the sarcasm and not on the substance of what I actually said. And the substance of what I said, Megan, it is true that we become anti-family. It is true that the left has become anti-child. It is simply true. Listen, um, I understand sarcasm. I understand uh, joking around. But you're the... Uh, uh, the presumptive, well, actually not presumptive. You are the nominee for vice president of the United States of America. This is no time to be being sarcastic and making jokes. Now, to be fair, he did say that in 2021 when he was not um, a nominee. But to address it now, saying, oh, just being sarcastic or whatever, like people that hold public office shouldn't be making or, 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 cause he was, he was a senator even when he said that, um, he shouldn't be making those sarcastic remarks. But putting that aside, more importantly, and this is him saying what he seriously thinks is that Democrats are anti family and anti child. And that also is just not true. Just because Kamala Harris doesn't have kids doesn't mean that that is the whole Republican party's thought process. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, and I would also just like to remind him that Kamala's husband, um, just can't even remember his name, but he has children and uh, she's very close with her stepkids. They call her Mamala. 
So anyways, and she also has nieces and all that stuff. So it's just, it's just, it's just unfounded rhetoric and it just really doesn't make any sense. All right. This brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Celine Dion makes comeback during Paris Olympics opening ceremonies. Uh, uh, Celine Dion gave her first live performance in over four years at the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics. This is her first performance seeing, uh, since being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. I have a little clip. Take a listen. Celine Dion sounds amazing as a born Montreal Quebecer. Uh, this makes me proud. They say one in every three households has a Celine Dion album. I mean, I guess that was back in the day or a CD or whatever. But, you know, we all love Celine Dion here um, in Montreal and Quebec. So shout out to the queen of Quebec. Uh, love to see that she's back out looking great. I saw her in a video like um, in the parking lot waving to people. She was um, standing on the side of the door. She got out the sunroof. Like she looks like she is back and ready. Um, I, I don't know if this means that she's going to go back out on tour. Cause remember she was like starting her world, world tour, but then, um, had to cancel it. So it looks like she's doing a lot better. It looks like she's back in, in, in rare form. So, uh, we are happy to see it. All right. In our second quick story, social media reacts to after they assume 50 cents Ex-girlfriend Cuban Lynx was spotted getting into a car with Travis Scott. Um, Travis Scott and Cuban Lynx caused chatter throughout social media early Friday after surveillance footage sh uh, reportedly showing the two getting into the same car. It's not exactly known where the video took place. Nonetheless, the two people assumed to be Travis Scott's and uh, Cuban were seen saying bye to a group of people before heading into a black vehicle. After making their way inside the car, another person also was seen joining behind them. Travis Nor Cuban has spoken about spoken about the matter. Uh, nonetheless, folks have started to talk on social media and sharing their thoughts, and even started to assume that the two may be dating. Cuban last known public relationship public relationship was with Fifty Cent. Um, I love Cuban links. She's a very, very, uh, beautiful woman. I just, I really just like her personality. I mean, I know I don't really know her, but I do follow her on Instagram. And this is just really because, you know, 50 cent is very petty and gets very ignorant at times. So people are like, oh my gosh, who had the nerve to be dating his ex-girlfriend? Um, 50 Cent hasn't said anything about this. I feel like 50 is kind of just getting over like the gossip mill. And that was like old 50 cent. 50 is in Shreveport. Um, preparing for his um, uh, harbor and and, har and comedy tour or weekend or whatever he's doing out in uh, Shreveport. So um, I like that he's paying no attention to this. They broke up like six months ago. Larry Deal, well, whoever she wants to deal with. This is just ridiculous. All right, this brings us to our third quick story. Chipotle CEO says restaurant will serve bigger portions after complaints. Um, I know some of y'all uh, are ready to go off on Chipotle workers when they uh, they give damn near empty chicken bowls. Well, the company has finally heard the complaints and is going to do something about it, giving bigger portions. According to ABC News, Brian Silo, the head of the company, said that during a call with investors that there uh, was never a directive to provide less to our customers, but the company took note about the portion sizes of what customers have posted on social media. Getting the feedback caused us to relook our executives' uh, executions across our entire system, he said. We have focused in on those outlining portion scores based on customer surveys. He also noted that some restaurants uh, had to be retrained on giving the right standards. He also said, we are re-emphasizing training and coaching around ensuring that we are constantly making bowls and burritos correct. We have also leaned in and re-emphasized generous portions across all of our restaurants, he added, noting that it's the core of our brand equity at Chipotle. I, for one, am not a huge Chipotle fan. I know people love it. My cousin who listens to the show all the time, she is a huge Chipotle fan. Like, she just goes nuts. She would literally, like, be in Montreal and drive to Ottawa or or anytime she's in Toronto, like, have Chipotle. So I know there's 
big, huge Chipotle fans out there. Um, I feel like every time I go to a restaurant and I don't like my portion size, I'd ask them to just put more anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're like, hey, anytime I'm at a restaurant, like, do you want extra? Like, no, I don't want to pay for extra. I just want my size. So, hey, I just, I guess enough people like me complain. Social media is a very powerful tool. We get a lot of stuff done uh, with social media. So I'm happy to hear this because I feel like restaurants um, really skimp out and try to be slick and not give you uh, enough that you're paying for. So I'm happy to hear this. All right. In our fourth and final quick story, Drake reacts to impersonator and he says, sometimes you just got to pop out. Um, so Drake trolls Kendrick Lamar and his fans while reacting to a Drizzy impersonator surprising fans at a boxing match. Do I have a clip of this? I have a little clip. Take a listen. All right, for those of you who cannot see the video, there's a fake Drake. This should, he shouldn't even call himself a fake Drake. Like, this guy's like 100 pounds heavier than Drake. Okay, maybe not 100, but 50 pounds. He literally just is a light-skinned guy with, with braids. Um, anyways, this is what I love about Drake. He knows how to make fun of himself. So he this video was going viral. I think it was like Sunday morning. Um, and then Drake reposted it and said, you know, sometimes it got to pop out obviously taking uh, the Kendrick line. A lot of people online are like, oh, he's just pretending to be unbothered. I said this a million times. I 100% believe Drake is bothered. For sure, he didn't like that he took the, took an L. Um, and, you know, that, you know, that some perception of Drake has changed, for sure. But he's not sitting down in his $100 million house and on his jet, like, crying. Like I said, his streams are up. Uh, or sorry, his streams are not down. He's still making the same amount of money. You know, I even heard there was some concert in Toronto, like on Friday or Saturday. I think it was like Limp Biscuit, and they're like, "Yo, Drake is here," and some people boot him. Trust me, Drake is unbothered, and I love that he reposted this, and he still knows how to make fun of himself. So, shout out to the boy Drizzy. All right, this brings us to question of the day. I got two questions of the day, so I'm going to do these ones quick. Uh, the first question is, what immediately tells you that a person wasn't raised right? Um, well, the first person had a list of seven, so I'm going to do them real quickly. Uh, pink lucky official said, walking into a room and not speaking. Second is interrupting people when they are talking. Third is not washing their hands after they use the restroom. Four, talking to their mama any kind of way. Five, just hanging on the phone when the conversation ends and not saying bye. Oh, sorry, just hanging up the phone and not saying bye. Six, not telling somebody you're leaving when you are departing. What? Who would do that? Seven, not saying thank you when somebody offers you something if you don't want it. That's true. I hate when people say no. You have to say no, thank you. All right. Um, somebody wrote... Um, not simple manners like please and thank you, 100%. That's what I just said, actually. Cookie Boy LA said how they treat restaurant staff. Woo! That's a big one for me. I hate when people are rude to restaurant staff. If you're ever on a first date, you could really tell a lot about somebody by how they treat um, waiters. That's just a little hint for people that are going on dates. Uh, Quick Slit said first time at your house and they open the refrigerator. Okay, who would do that? official.ce says cursing around older people even when you're grown it's still a no totally agree uh glitter milk cosmetics said not washing their hands after they use the restroom how do you know what people are doing in the restroom somebody said out outside clothes on their bed uh all right i'll read two more uh rude to people just because and somebody said not speaking when they're entering someone's home totally agree all right, our second question of the day. If blank was an Olympic sport, I would be a gold medalist. All right, I love these. These are my favorite. Um, all right, somebody said, if sleep was an Olympic sport, I'd be a gold medalist. Somebody said, hustling, that would be me. I didn't say that, but I'm agreeing to the person. Uh, Chris Essichin said, uh, getting to that bread. All right, hustling. Um, Kim Stamp said napping, if napping was, my gosh, if nap, napping was a, um, a sport, my gosh, I would friggin' fail. I wouldn't even make the cut. I literally have problems sleeping. 
Um, two O Spiff said spending money. Okay, I like that. Somebody said smoking weed. That's hilarious. Um, being antisocial. Aw, poor you. That was happy her underscore said being antisocial. Somebody, uh, Rose Barissa said sleeping and overthinking. If that was an Olympic sport, she'd be a gold medalist. Um, Akbar Forrest said if cleaning was an Olympic sport, he'd be a gold medalist. Somebody said eating chips, they'd be a gold medalist. Throwing disgust. Okay. Somebody said joking. That's a good one. I feel like I may not be a gold medalist, but I'd definitely be bronze or silver. Uh, somebody said chewing gum. How much gum do you chew to be a gold medalist? Lord. Somebody said crying, overthinking, uh, postpartum, post, okay, I don't know what that word is, and everything in between. Somebody said overthinking, being late, sleeping, minded my business, procrastinating, loving God, cursing. That's hilarious. Uh, being low key and out the way. Somebody said unlocking, then locking my card after every transaction. Somebody said sleeping and eating. And then last but not least, somebody said bathing. How can you be a gold medalist in bathing? I mean, how many baths do you take? Um, anyways, that was the Monday show. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely tune in for Tuesday. Uh, we'll be here as always. Um, before I leave, I want to just remind you guys all the ways to keep up with the show. If you're used to watching the show on YouTube or listening to it on podcast platforms, please try to check me out Monday through Friday on cfqr600.com or 600 AM if you're in the Montreal area. We do play the Toronto Love podcast. We mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip-hop and R&B. It's a great way to listen to the show, to get your entertainment news while listening to some dope music. And I select the music so you know it's banging. Vice versa, if you're used to listening to the show on CFQR 600 and you can't always catch the show from 11 to 12, don't worry. Every single show is uploaded uploaded to YouTube or podcast platforms. Just go to your desired site, type in Trend Out Loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a show. And if you're like me and you like to watch your podcast with video, Spotify now supports video. And if you ask me, it's a better way to watch video than YouTube. Because YouTube, if you're on the app and you close it, it stops We're on Spotify it never stops and you could watch the audio, you could do other things, send emails and text messages while you're listening and watching the Turn Out Loud podcast, man. Um, lastly, follow me on Instagram, um, Exclu City Media or Turn Out Loud. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace.